Mid Journey version 5.1 is out, and it brings a whole lot of new changes to the AI art scene, especially to UI and UX designs. I'm going to take a look at how it compares to previous versions of Mid Journey and how it works in terms of web designs. Let's begin. First, some background. Mid Journey 5.1 is the newest and most advanced version as of the date of this video, released on May 4th, 2023. This model has a stronger default aesthetic, making it easier to use with simple text prompts. It also has high coherency, excels at accurately interpreting natural language prompts, produces fewer unwanted artifacts and borders, has increased image sharpness, and supports advanced features like repeating patterns with dash dash tile. The new model also comes with a new parameter called raw. Since Midjourney 5.1 can be fine-tuned with dash dash style parameter, the dash dash raw parameter removes some of the default aesthetic styling. I've taken a closer look at some of the AI art produced by this model and it looks fantastic. To demonstrate, I've placed a few photos of Midjourney 5 on the left and 5.1 on the right for you to compare. Personally, I think it has much better lighting, scene composition, and realism. What I'm really interested to see is how it compares to previous models in terms of website design. I'm going to test this out by comparing some prompts I used in earlier videos on past versions of Midjourney to the latest version. I also did some research online and unfortunately there was no reference to what changes I can expect for web design. So the best way will be to find out myself. So first I'll need to set Midjourney to use version 5.1. I can do this by passing in the forward slash settings command and then selecting MJV 5.1. Also be aware, while in the past Midjourney was locked for paid users only, they have re-enabled their free trial. If you want to try it out, jump into the description of this video and join my Codex community Discord channel where I've integrated the Midjourney bot for you to test and use. First, I'm going to jump into my previous history of all my designs. Here's one of my favorites, and this one here is for a prompt that says a web design course and book with color theory and lots more. It's my go-to example, so I'm going to plug this prompt into Midjourney and see how 5.1 handles it. First impressions are that Midjourney 5.1 definitely makes the AI art here for the web designs look a lot more vibrant. There's a lot more color happening. And while a couple of the designs look like a book, it could probably be because the prompting is a little bit different in 5.1 when you can use more general language rather than just keywords. One of the key aspects was that it also handles aspect ratios a lot better. So I tried to do a regular 16 by 9, which is a homepage, but swap it around to 9 by 16. This should hopefully give me something closer to maybe a phone screen or at least larger sections for a web design that you would normally do in something like Figma. And wow, that actually does quite well. It's the exact same prompt, but just the aspect ratio has changed. But this has given Midjourney just enough context clues to create more web design looking artwork and I'm really impressed. I'm gonna take a closer look at version two. I'm gonna upscale it and see what it comes out with. It still can't replicate text, but maybe that's a feature that'll be added in the future. But in terms of the different sections for a thing that kind of looks like a website, this definitely gives inspiration. Looking through my history, another design I really liked was the motorcycle landing page for a website design. In Mid Journey 4, these produce some really cool results, but mainly because of the artwork. Let me try and plug this into version 5.1. I'm also going to select the aspect ratio of 9 by 16 because I really like the results that came out last time. The AI artwork for these web designs don't particularly look that great. This is because they more look like photos with some text attached at the bottom rather than actual web designs. Now I can definitely agree that my past version didn't look like a web design either. However, its layout and styling made it very easy to use for a home page. The designs from 5.1 here are a little bit more like photos tacked onto the top of a screen. So I think I'm gonna try a different prompt. Another thing I wanted to try out is really pushing the aspect ratio provided by 5.1. So instead of just doing a 9 by 16, this time I'm going to do something like a 3 by 16. This should hopefully create a much more portrait-like design and hopefully lots of different sections for a nice fleshed out website. After running this prompt, I did find that it was quite long. And when I tried to zoom in on it, I didn't actually get many details. I'm not sure exactly what's going on on this prompt. So what I'll do is upscale the very first iteration of it and take a closer look. Now here's the first version here, and it looks kind of like a website from far away, but I'm gonna open up this in a browser and definitely zoom in to take a closer look. 
And here's the design. It's basically a photo again with what looks like text and then another photo with some text. And generally speaking, this kind of looks a little bit boring and plain. Yes, sure, this could be like different sections of a website, but it's a little bit uninspiring and something that anyone I think could put together. And this doesn't fill me with confidence, so I think I definitely need to do some more testing and see if I can push the limits or if things have really changed in 5.1. There is one more design that I thought came out really well when I was testing earlier. It was a web design for a cafe. Now I passed in this following prompt, which included UI, UX, web design, and I passed in the aspect ratio of nine by 16, because I'm finding this aspect ratio is providing the best type of results. And here is what Midjourney 5.1 came up with, with some web design AI artwork. These kind of look a lot better. I definitely like this one on the bottom left, which has two really good looking sections, which I believe I could replicate as an introduction as well as menu selections for a cafe. People often ask me, how do I turn these into web designs? I'll show you right now. I'm gonna jump into Editor X. It's a no coding platform where you can design websites literally dragging and dropping items in. On my dashboard, I'll select to create a new site. Here on the Editor X panel, I'm going to change the background for this site. Here on my other tab, I'm going to inspect this page and I'm going to pull out the hexadecimal value for the color of the background. Then I'm going to head over to the background, add the color and paste it in to be used as the background color for this section. Next, I'm going to select the accent color here that we're using for some of the text as well as the elements and shapes. I'm going to drag in a custom title and I'm going to pass in this background color. I'm going to call this something like a cool cafe and I'm going to also apply a custom font so it can look a little bit more interesting. I'll make the size a little bit bigger and put it in about the same position as the design. This also has another subheading so I'm going to drag in one more heading in here and pass this in and maybe I'll write something simple like check out our selection or menu or something like that. This is in a white color. And finally, there's a bit of a paragraph underneath it. Here, I'm going to just use the paragraph placeholder, select the white text and give it a little bit of opacity because it's not completely white in the design. And this makes its contrast look a lot better, especially with visual hierarchy. From this, you can hopefully see how I'm already dragging inspiration from the designs here from Midjourney. The final thing was a button here, which I can select with the accent color. And this section already is starting to look really good. The other item here is this shape on the right hand side. I like the little flowers, so I'm going to actually copy this entire shape. Now I'm going to drag in an image element on Editor X and drag and drop this here on the right hand side. This will upload and place into my design here and it's almost ready to go. There is a little bit of an overlay, but I'm going to create a container and actually drag and drop the same color on top of it so it looks like it's empty. The proper way would probably be to replicate this shape and create a vector artwork, but this is a quicker and simpler away just for demoing purposes. For this section here, I'm going to call it chef's special. And then I'm going to also maybe drag in another paragraph or image in here so that it has a bit more details as to what that special is. So here I'll relabel the text, I'll center it and align it to this container. And I'll put something here like chicken pie. Once all the items are in place, it's really easy to drag and align them, lock them into place and have them nice and centered. I did this here on the right hand side and then on the left hand side, I actually selected and grouped all the elements in a stack and then also centered them so they look good as well. And this is kind of the future of how web design is done these days. As a secret bonus to this video, I'm going to give a prize to the first person who identifies which part of this video had AI generated content. You'll need to go to the secret bonus channel on my discord and then post exactly what that content was and where it happened. And to give you a hint, it wasn't the AI generated content from Midjourney. It was something completely different. I'll be looking forward to hearing who first figures it out.